I, I wanted to also talk about um, when I first took over Weird Tales. When it was first announced, there was a lot of applause and people congratulating me, but there was also a lot of people that came out of the woodwork and were extremely negative and they were very ugly to me. Um, but Tanith was not, you know, Tanith had been publishing Weird Tales for years. And so people were going on and on about, oh, Ann Vandermeer is going to take over Weird Tales and she's going to ruin it and she'll never publish Tanith Lee. And I was like, what are you talking about? I love her. I love her. <laughs> And so well, I, I'll be so, honest, okay, because it's like I'm 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 like I am the small nobody and I can so I can kind of say what I but a lot of what's come up with Tanith is in the time in which she came up, she was one of the few women. Um she had a lot of barriers. She had a lot of people who didn't want her to publish the things that she was publishing. Um and I wonder if um you know someone saying that about you not publishing Tanith Lee, I guess, I think, of course, Tanith is going to support another woman breaking another barrier, you know, like, that feels to me like, of course, she would do that. Does that seem like part of it to you? Or is that something? Well, I don't know why these people thought someone like Tanith. You know, they they thought that I was going to ruin the magazine and whatever, whatever. But, you know, anything she sent me, I was going to publish. That's mm -hmm. just full stop. That's it. And and I did have other people in the community telling me how difficult she was to work with. And she was not difficult. She was a pleasure and a joy. I will say that that her method of the way that we edited, um, she was not a person that could really work on the computer. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but she did her work longhand. Wow, she didn't no. sit there. She she had um, she had this. I don't know if a lot of people knew this, but she she was dyslexic. So for her, it was easier to do things on paper. And when she and I worked together at Weird Tales, we actually sent manuscripts back and forth. That's how we worked. And I didn't do that with anyone else but her. She was the only person that I did that with. And it was worth all of it to have a story by her and to work with her. And to see her brilliance. And um, so some people, I think, probably didn't want to work with her because they had to go through that extra step. But you know what? <laughs> if you want a Tanith Lee story, come on. Yeah, I come think on. you have to no be No one writes like her. No, they no don't. No one writes like her. I mean, and then, sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, no, please. I, no, I think that's the thing that's sort of um, interesting is that her style of writing like her way of like moving between tropes and genres and her way of um including sort of more adult content and her and her way of like treating characters as like with the gender fluidity and the sexual fluidity and all the things not as the focus of the story but just part of the story all of that seems very much more contemporary like we're coming to it now in more mainstream um, in a more mainstream way where she was doing it 40 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. that's what it mm -hmm. feels like. And she was, she was definitely blazing all those trails. And I, and it's interesting because you were talking about how some of us came to her through silver metal lover. Others came through other stories of hers. And I think that this is a sign of her brilliance, but also something that caused barriers for her is the fact that she could not be pigeonholed into one thing. Yeah, She wasn't just a sword and sorcery writer. She wasn't just a person who wrote ghost stories. She wasn't just a weird fiction writer. She was all of these things and everything. Because the thing about her that I love so much is she could do anything. And she did not, she did not worry about what's popular right now. What, what are people buying right now? To her, it was like, what am I passionate about? What is, what, what am I compelled to write? And I know that a lot of times, you know, we were talking about um, how she and John had this amazing creative bond to each other where he would say something or he would do something with his work and it would spark something in her. And all of a sudden she would just have to write. And the same thing happened with him. He would, read something of hers and he would be inspired 
to do art. Mm -hmm. So they had this, this incredible creative partnership in addition to this amazing love for each other. And they really did. And, you know, I said earlier on how she and I were talking about how we were lucky to have young husbands, but really what it was is we were lucky to have such great partners. It doesn't matter what their age was. We just connected with each other so well. And um, the two of them had an amazing partnership. And when I looked at that, you know, at the time, at the time, Jeff and I were newly married. So it was still kind of new for me, but, but to look at them and to be inspired by their relationship meant a lot to me as well, because it also showed me, Julie, this is very important. It also showed me that you could be a professional woman in the workplace and you could have dreams and aspirations and you could still have a partner who supports you, who is there for you. And, and their relationship showed me that. And of course, that's what I'm lucky to have that with my husband. Not everybody has that, but um, that was just amazing to me to see that, to see, to see, to see it in action. I, I do think um, whenever you, you, you and Jeff and, and Tanith and John, I mean, it's the partnership and then also the creative partnership. That's the part that I think is, I have an incredibly supportive partner actually, um, he, and he, he can see me and my work, but he's not a, you know, he, it's that other part of it. And I don't miss it. I, I love the way my relationship works, but that's very elusive to find a romantic partner. Who's also your creative partner. That's unusual. Yes. Yes. You know? 